Hello everyone. So this time I am bringing to you something very new, fresh, that is the Google Colab extension to VS Code. Now you should be able to use the Google Colab machines straight from your VS Code IDE. Uh, so here is the official blog post announcing uh, the new extension. It's quite short because it's something simple. And I, it also highlights here the main use cases, that the main advantage of this new ex extension. So for VS Code users, now you should be able to have easy access to these Google Colab machines, the GPUs, the TPUs, and also regular CPUs straight from your uh, favorite IDE. And for Colab users, uh, now you should be able to integrate uh, these Colab notebooks into your uh, VS Code workflow. So usually for people like me that do a lot of experiments and prototyping, usually what I would what would happen for me is that I would create a bunch of Google Colab notebooks, usually saving them on like something like Google Drive. Then I would need to go there, download everything, and export to my VS Code to the main repository that I'm doing the work. Now I should be able to create those notebooks straight into my repository using VS Code, just doing the best practices following all the uh, all the standardization coding uh, that I do that I have for my main repository being more easy to share with uh, co-workers so it should be good for both of these kind of users here so if you're going to download it make sure that you are downloading the official Google Colab extension you can check here to be sure that you are doing the right thing and since it's very simple let's jump straight right into it uh, before we begin, I also wrote uh, a blog post covering the, basically the same thing. So if you're inter interested in the text version, make sure to check out this uh, blog post. I will leave the comments. Uh, in the comments, I will leave the, the link. Okay, so let's start. We can jump here into VS Code. The first thing would be to install the extension. So we can go here in the extensions tab. Here you can already see, but I would just look for search for Colab. So you can see there are a few here, but this is the official one. In my case, it's already installed. If you don't have it yet, you can just install it and you would have this. You see the same thing. Uh, to start using it, it's also super simple. You can just create a, a, any kind of notebook. Like this one is just uh, to test it. I can go here and just run a cell or just assign my kernel here. So if you click here on uh, Select kernel, that is a standard thing that you have for uh, Python notebooks, GeoPython notebooks on VS Code. You would see the regular options, but now you can also see Colab. So if I click on Colab, I have a few options. This Auto Connect, it uses the, the recent machine that you have used. It. It's quite handy if you are using specific machines. If not, you can just click here on New Colab Server. Once I click it, uh, I can see all the machine types that I have available, CPU, GPU, and also TPU. So let's start with uh, CPU. And then I can assign a name to my uh, machine. So I will use the default one, which is Colab CPU for now. So let's do it. Then I select the uh, kind of machine, the kernel that I needed. I'm going to use Python. And after a little bit, I should have the machine working already. Let's just print one. Okay, so it's finishing the connection to the kernel. And you can see here it's working, right? Okay, so then let's use a different machine. So I can, you can see that we ha I have my machine here, but let's select another one. So another collab machine. This time, let's pick a uh, GPU. Okay, GPU. In this case, I have those ones available. Let's pick the smallest one, the T4. I'm also going to use the default name. And after a little bit, it should start. Okay, let's select the language. Okay, seems to be running. Uh, I also left here two uh, code samples that you, you can debug or troubleshoot if your machine is actually working and set up as it should be. This first one, the NVIDIA SMI command, it's a command that uh, displays the kind of uh, graphic card that you have. Since I'm using a kernel with GPU here, you can see the uh, Tesla T4, so it's the correct GPU. 
You can also take a look at the environment that you are using. So if I if I just uh, show the libraries that I have installed, you can see that I have a bunch of libraries here, which means that I'm using the uh, Google Colab environment that they already pre-installed a lot of machine learning, uh, data visualizations, and data science libraries uh, that is very handy. OK, so seems to be correct. And let's try to use the last uh, machine type, which is the uh, TPU. TPU, let's use the smallest one, the V5, and the default name. Also using Python. Yeah, so it's already working. Yeah, it's not printing because it's not a GPU machine here, but uh, it's already the, the TPU kernel. So the cool thing is also that, so this is uh, just using the Collab uh, ecosystem, the Collab environment. So if I go to a Collab page, like this one here, the welcome page, and I click here on my sessions, I should be able to see, yeah, the, the three kernel machines that I have started. The one with the CPU, the GPU, and also the TPU. So I can terminate them from here, but I can also do it from uh, VS Code. So if I go here and I click on this Collab tab, I can click on Remove Server. Right, so I can select, let's uh, remove the TPU first. Should be removed. Okay, so TPU is gone. Now let's also terminate the GPU kernel. Awesome, and finally, we should remove the CPU kernel. And if I go back to Collab, now if I take a look at the sessions, I shouldn't be seeing any sessions here. So it's very important to terminate your sessions once you finish the work so that you don't waste your uh, Collab credits. Okay, so now that we are able to install the, the extension and use the Collab machines, uh, there are a bunch of ways that you can test this new extension. So in this welcome page uh, of Google Collab, you can just download this notebook and run it. Also, a little bit by the end, you have uh, links to different types of notebooks that does different things. So you can download a few of them and test if everything is working, both for CPUs, GPUs, and also for uh, TPUs. If you see any issues or if you want to request any features, just uh, make sure to contact the Collab team. Yeah, they have their contributing guide here. So you can uh, report issues or ask for new features. Uh, the team should be eager to hear from the community. And I just have a last demo to finalize everything. So I have this a notebook here that I, that I uh, wrote a few blog posts about and also recorded a video. That is uh, how I can set up a Olama server on, using Google Colab infrastructure. So basically it's a way to use Google Colab uh, to host a model and then query it from uh, remote machines. So basically I would be using Collab to serve a model for me for free. So this seems to be a good and interesting use case to test this new extension. So what I will do is that I have these notebooks uh, created here, one that sets up the server and another one that queries the server. So I will download both of them and load uh, them at my uh, VS Code machine. So let's do it. All right, so I already have the notebooks here. So let's start with setting up the server. Okay, let me clear everything. Uh, to set up the server, since I will be hosting a, a Gemma model here, I will set up using a GPU machine. So let's start with Collab, new Collab server, GPU. AT4 should be enough. So I won't go through everything that's working here. It's quite simple. Uh, I will just leave a link as well to uh, the video and the blog post that I explain everything here, but it's quite simple. Here's just a few cells that set up uh, the, the machine, uh, installs the required libraries and uh, turn on the server, the Olama server here. 
okay machine is set up let's keep stalling everything and we can run so something that you may see here is that uh, here I'm trying to use the user data uh, library from Colab. What it does is that it loads the secrets from Google Colab. I wasn't able to make it work yet, so the team should be working to allow it to be possible. But the idea is that I'm going to use it here to retrieve uh, the NGROC authentication token so that I can serve my model. Since, since this is not currently working, I will just uh, hard code it here as a parameter and use in the notebook. So for you to have an idea, uh, what I'm talking about is these secrets here. So you can store some secrets into Google Colab and this library will just fetch them from the environment. It doesn't seem to be working right now, but the team should be able to fix it fast. Okay, so let's add it here. Okay, secret is set. Uh, let's replace this call. Okay. Seems to be working now. What I need to do is that I need to copy this address here, which is the address of my uh, remote server. Okay, so let's do it. And then I can go to the other notebook, which is this one that queries the previous one. Okay, so for the machine here, I could just query the remote collab server on my local machine. But since we are going, we are trying to test the collab extension. I will just start a CPU machine. Okay, machine is finishing the setup. Okay, installing the dependencies, and we can keep going. I will just replace this address with the new one, and here I'm going to serve this old Gemma model. Okay, what it's doing right now is that it's pulling the model from the server. So if I come here, I can see that it's downloading the model and now it's already serving and doing the inference at the other one. Okay, you can see here the output. And so here it's just querying it using the Olama library and here it's also querying basically doing the same thing but using the request library uh, from regular Python. So it seems to be working. I am using different machines from Google Colab on my VS Code uh, ID. We can, we can finalize by deleting the machines, but this would be basically the idea. So now you should be able to uh, create notebooks, use the Colab infrastructure, but straight from your local VS Code development workflow. That should be much more optimal to keep the good coding standards. So, uh, this is it for now. I hope you enjoy it and see you in the next one.